Found and Matthew Continetti is the editor in chief of the Washington Free Beacon, and he's here to talk a little bit more about those differences. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Heather. So, do you believe that it is going to be deja vu all over again for Clinton in terms of its comparison to 2008? Well, look, I'm a little bit skeptical for a few reasons. One, if you recall, in 2008, the party was divided. Barack Obama had a lot of party leaders, a lot of major donors behind him heading into Iowa. He had Oprah, remember? Uh, so there was a real sense of a cultural momentum that he had behind him. And, of course, Hillary was plainly upset there. Yeah, this time, the whole party's behind Hillary, and it's really Bernie getting the left of the left. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the same as in 2008. Well, in uh, 2008, she ran on experience. It appears to be that she's doing that again this time around. Why do you think she believes that that tactic will work this time? Well, I think she thinks it works this time because she's a proven uh, leader, from her perspective at least. I mean, I'd question that. But the, the truth is Democrats like her, and they still uh, the normal Democratic voter is still much more inclined to support Hillary Clinton than, than Bernie Sanders. I'd also say this. A lot of the uh, important liberal intellectuals, the op-ed writers and such, in 2008, they were, they were split, and a lot of them were for Obama. This time around, they're almost all for Hillary. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this latest uh, Quinnipiac poll, though. If you ask voters, it is a close one, and no doubt the Clinton campaign wasn't counting on this. Sanders, 49 percent. Clinton, 45 percent in Iowa. So, you know, Sanders taking the lead there. Right. At this point, Iowa, I think, is a jump ball. And in this sort of situation, you would think that the campaign with the better organization, the more resources, would get that jump ball. In that case, then, it's Hillary Clinton. I'd also say Hillary's playing an expectations game. If you look at what her campaign is saying, they're trying to downplay expectations for Iowa so that if she posts a good result or even wins on uh, caucus night, uh, well, the momentum will be huge going and, out of Iowa. And we've talked a lot about the ground game in Iowa. Um, Hillary Clinton holding about 100 events since she announced her campaign back in April. And then Sanders, if you compare it to him, uh, he didn't get to Iowa until about midsummer. But his numbers in terms of the events themselves, much, much larger. Right. And of course, there's a there's a big resistance in both parties to kind of the established candidates or the candidates who have the most kind of credentials. And you see that in the Democratic race, where a lot of Bernie supporters are younger, uh, they're newer to the process. And the question is, will they show up? Now, look, in 2008, Barack Obama's campaign invested a lot in of time, energy and money in making sure they did. I'm not sure Bernie has the same resources at his disposal. So what do you think will happen after Iowa and New Hampshire? Well, the best thing that can happen for Hillary is that she wins Iowa, and then if she loses New Hampshire, which I think seems likely since Sanders is from a neighboring state and has a big lead there, then at least we won't get the stories about the fall of the House of Clinton. Now, if she loses Iowa and then loses New Hampshire, well, it's panic time for the Clinton campaign. Yeah, those stories already starting to come out. Uh, Matthew Continetti, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.